Hey everyone, this is Solomon, pastor of True Journey Church. I just want to give this quick word on today, something that's been on my heart and uh, this topic that's been, if you want to say trending, and this is the topic about Beyonce and her new song called Church Girl. And of course, you know, the world is going to do what the world do. And I know people, some people may hear, listen to this video, um, especially those that's not Christian. They may think, oh, it's not that big of a deal. But I'm really addressing right now is the Christian church, my brothers and sisters in the body of Christ um, who are part of the family of faith. So, of course, you know, Beyonce came up with this song called Church Girl. And of course, yes, it's bad. Um, but I don't know why people are so shocked because the unsaved will do what the unsaved do. This is their nature and they will make songs. Um, they will have things that is anti-God or anti-Christ. This is the way it is because this is their nature. Um, and I don't believe that as Christians, we should be listening to Beyonce. <laughs> Beyonce included in her new song, Church Girl. Yeah, y'all leave Beyonce alone. Center of his will. <laughs> leave her alone. As long as she got something in there, that's all right. Hey. I levitated. I whipped my own back and asked for dominion at your feet. I drank the blood and drank the wine. I saw the devil. I bathed in bleach and plugged my menses with pages from the holy book. And different type of filthy, ungodly songs. Um, it will affect our spirit. Um, I believe we should listen to different type of songs. And I could think back to myself, even before I was saved, how I used to listen to all type of music until God transformed me, which wasn't an overnight thing. It wasn't immediate. But whatever the case, as Christians, of course, we have to be careful what type of music we listen to and what we feed our spirits with. Because um, as God transforms us, uh, we're going to desire a different type of music. Um, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 3, it says, Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit addressing one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart. So notice what the Bible says. First, he tells us don't get drunk with wine. So this is more of a common sense thing that we know as Christians. And even in Paul's time, uh, drinking was a huge thing. People got drunk, they went to worship their gods and they lifted up their gods. But Paul tells us as Christians, we should not get drunk with wine. We should not get drunk. Now, there's a debate on whether Christians could drink. The Bible um, doesn't say that it's a sin to drink, but it says it's a sin to get drunk. This is what the scripture says. So the Bible says, don't get drunk with wine, but he says, be filled with the spirit. Now, what does Paul mean here in the context of the scripture? To be filled with the spirit is to have your life under control, under control by the Holy Spirit, which means the Holy Spirit is controlling your life. And so when the Holy Spirit is controlling our life, we don't need to get drunk for joy and peace. We need to seek the Lord and he will give us joy and peace. And as the spirit is controlling my life, I'm now singing spiritual songs, hymns, psalms uh, uh, and, and spiritual songs. And it says singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart. So first off, uh, if, if I'm filled with the spirit, the spirit is controlling my life. Now my songs have changed. Now I'm worshiping the Lord with songs from my heart. And even it says addressing or speaking to one another. So this is, we can uh, put it in this context. I would say, you know, uh, even the praise team, if they're up singing, you know, people say, well, I don't sing to people. Well, this is not what the Bible says. It says you sing to the people, but you sing to the Lord from your heart. So God changes our song. He changes our melody. And some of this ungodly, this ungodly worldly music that glorifies sex, that glorifies violence, uh, you know, that glorifies everything. <laughs> As Christians, we need to put aside. But this is not the main focus of this video at all whatsoever. Because, like I said, there is an outrage in the body of Christ about this uh, Beyonce song. That, oh, she's taking this song and she's disrespected 
uh, the body of Christ. She's disrespected the church. And yes, she has. But once again, I want everybody to remember something that if somebody's not saved, that's going to be their nature. We should not be surprised at these things of people who disrespect Christ and disrespect the church. It should not be a shock. It's been happening all throughout time since the church existed. But now what should surprise us and what should bother us is those who are actually promoting this and are OK with this. And what, about, what do I mean by that? Well, the song that Beyonce actually uh, the song that Beyonce took, she actually got it from another church person. It was a Twinkie Clark song. So now my question is this. Why isn't the church actually outraged? that Twinkie Clark would give this song to Beyonce. And some people say, well, you know, she didn't know um, um, what song it was, didn't know what type of song it was gonna be. Well, there has been no condemnation of the song. There hasn't been anything. So what we should be outraged by is that we're seeing Christians actually give or support the world in their ungodliness. This is why we should be shocked, okay? So there's, there's no type of, hey, we shouldn't be doing this. You know, the world's going to do what they do. But as Christians, we have the light of Jesus Christ and we should know better. So I'm wondering why people are not more upset with Twinkie Clark giving her the right to use the song for Church Girl. That's where we should be upset. The world is actually, as Christians, we're actually giving our gifts and talents to those that are not saved to lift up Satan and his kingdom. This is what we're doing. And this is where the compromise is happening in the Christian church. And then we wonder why we can't reach the world, why we're not winning people when they clearly see us um, um, buddy buddied up. Now, I'm one of the people I'm not saying we cannot be around unsaved people, we can't have unsaved friends, but it's different when we're encouraging them in the kingdom of darkness. That's where the problem comes in at. So these are the type of things we have to watch. And I believe the church is not gonna be defeated from without. It's gonna be defeated from within. And what do I mean when I use that word defeated? Well, you can never totally, completely defeat the church. And what I mean by the church, I'm not talking about a building, I'm talking about the people. You cannot defeat the church. Jesus says, upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. But at the same time, it's within the church that you have those who are influential leaders who are leading and influencing the body of Christ the wrong way. And this is where the church should be outraged, okay? I mean, yeah, we could get upset that, that sinners are saying this about the church and the body of Christ, I understand, but our outrage should be towards those who are actually promoting this. Now, you think about this, and I wanna say a couple of things here, that as Christian leaders, Christian pastors, you have uh, so-called bishops and things of that who are promoting ungodliness, okay? You look at some of the Christian movies that have been coming out, that is being made, and you have bishops and gospel artists who are either acting in these movies or they are either making the movies, they're producing the movies. I looked at this movie with Bishop T.D. Jakes and I know people are gonna be like, oh, you don't call names, you're judging. But once again, what I wanna show is where is the outrage? He makes this movie and it's what you would call, it has lustful scenes in there, very lustful. It doesn't lift up Christ. Now to the world, let me stress this, to the world, the world will look at that movie and say, oh, that's nothing, that's, that's nothing at all whatsoever. But for Christians who are trying to stay sexually pure, which is already difficult in our sexual culture, even though, even though with Christ, he'll give us power. But now we have actual pastors and bishops and gospel stars who are making movies with lust in it. And then they're preaching to us, and some of them not even preaching, that we need to stay sexually pure. This is a huge problem in the body of Christ. And I want us to look at this. Now, look at this Ephesians, um, Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 3. Look what it says here. It says, But sexual immorality and all impurity or covetousness must not be even be named among you as is proper among saints. So notice what this says here. And I want everybody to pay attention. Paul was writing to the church of Ephesus. And he tells the church of Ephesus 
that sexual immorality, impurity, and covetousness should not be named among the saints. Now, what does he mean by that? As the body of Christ as a whole, we should not have a reputation of being sexually immoral. He's talking about the body of Christ as a whole. In other words, you shouldn't go to a church and, that, and people say, yeah, man, that church is a sexually immoral church. Now, I'm not saying that uh, there could be people in the church who fall into sexual sin and they repent and they get transformed because we know the church is not perfect. But when we carry that, that name, that, that stigma, that, wow, that's a, a, a church that's sexually immoral. You know, they're preaching to us, but yet they're, they're all into sexual sin. That is a problem. So now we have pastors and bishops who are making movies that is actually against the scriptures. It's against the scriptures. And we have to watch this. So as I said, you have a, a Bishop T.D. Jake's movie that promotes lust. And yet, where's the outrage? Well, we can't judge. No, where is the outrage? We can judge in the right way because this is what the Bible told us to do. Okay, so you look at some of these Christian music videos. Um, there's a new movie out with Dietrich Haddon, lustful movie. Okay, and I know people are going to say, well, we got to make it real to reach people. We got to make it real. No, we don't. God wants us to be real, but he don't want us to be sinning while we're making it real. Okay, there's a huge difference. Yeah, you can make a movie and show sinners how to come to know Jesus, but we don't have to sin while doing it. Okay, and why is this happening? It is simply because of greed. Please notice this. He says sexual morality, impurity, or our covetousness must not be named among, among you as is proper among saints. So Paul said the word covetousness in the New Testament means greed. And so he says we shouldn't be known as people who are chasing money. We're full of greed. And a lot of these gospel artists, bishops are making movies not to promote the kingdom, but to promote, promote themselves and to build up their bank account. And this is clearly against the scriptures. It's against the scriptures. And so we have to watch this. And this is why I'm wondering, why isn't the church sounding the alarm on this? Okay, it should be sounding the alarm on these preachers, pastors, and so-called bishops who are actually promoting ungodliness when you're really supposed to be an example to the body of Christ. So, yeah, you, you could be upset with Beyonce and her song, but you better be more upset what's actually happening in the body of Christ. That's where our anger should be. OK, look at this. Second Peter, chapter two, verses one through three. And notice what he says here. And I want everybody to watch this. Um, this is Peter was warning the church. He said, but false prophets also also arose among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you who will secretly bring in destructive heresies even denying the master who bought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. So Paul, so Peter said, you're going to have these false prophets come in the church and they're going to bring heresy. They're going to bring false doctrine and it's going to be destructive heresy. And what do you mean by heresy? Even though this word developed over time, but they would bring divisions in the church, in the body of Christ. This is what they would do. OK, and so they would lead people astray. And it will bring and it will and swift destruction will come. And look what he says. Many will follow their sensuality. And because of them, the way of the truth will be blasphemed. Please notice this. He says these false teachers, they're going to bring sensuality. Now, what does that mean? The word sensuality just means lust. They're going to promote and bring the lust of the flesh. And because of this, they're going to lead astray many people. OK. And what's interesting it says, because of these people, the way of the truth will be blasphemed. What does that mean? He said, unbelievers will speak evil of the church because of what these people, these so-called leaders are doing. This is what's going to happen. And we see it happen today. What do people say? Oh, man, the church, they're full of hypocrites because of what this pastor is doing, what this pastor is doing. And this is what Peter is talking about. And so if we're Christians and you have pastors who are making lustful movies, promoting lustful songs and have no problem with it, how is the world going to see us? We're going to be seen as powerless, weak and compromisers. OK, and notice what he says. And in their greed, they will exploit you with false words. So he says in greed, these false prophets or teachers will exploit you. And I don't want to get off, but we know they're going to have these lying promises. If you sow this money, God's going to make you rich. Tomorrow is your day of destiny. 
If you turn around 10 times, next week your change is coming. All these are lying words that they use to exploit you to make money from you. This is what the Bible says. And I've talked about this in past videos. This is why, you know, when you have prophets come to town and ask you for money, ask you for a hundred dollars, don't give your money. They're exploiting you. But what's happening? The church, notice the warning you're getting. It's not necessarily from the world because the church is not to be like the world, but it's from within. It's from within. And I want to tell the church, this is what's happening. It's, it's, the, it's the enemy is working from within and causing us to compromise because you have leaders who are compromising. And a lot of times where the leader goes, the body will go. And so if leaders are compromising, then you're gonna have a bunch of weak saints and weak members. And so we have to stand for the truth. And so whether it's Twinkie Clark, whether it's Bishop Jakes, and all these people who are making these lustful movies, ungodly, doesn't have a Christian message, yeah, they need to repent. And they need to tell the body of Christ, we should not be doing this, okay? So I just want to tell the church, listen, we have to get back to being biblical, where we follow the Bible. And I know some people are gonna hear this, this is judging, this is harsh preaching. No, this is the Bible. We have to get back to being biblical and following the way of Jesus Christ. And I pray all these people I mentioned, I pray for them. And I pray God will give them repentance and it will lead the body of Christ the right way. So I want to encourage everyone, Follow the way of the truth. And we know the church is not full of perfect people, but no matter what, if you have pastors and leaders that compromise the word, they are not to be followed because they will hurt and damage the body of Christ. You don't follow a pastor because, or apostle or so-called bishop because how much money they have, what type of car they have. Just because they're going to have something don't mean you're going to have nothing. No, the anointing is not going to flow to you to have wealth and money that they have. That doesn't work like that. Follow people according to their character. Look beyond gifting and follow people according to their character. Thank you for hearing these words. God bless you.